Okay, it's recording. Hello and welcome to the Wise Up Podcast. I'm your host, the Canabster. No, wait, the Dinkster. The Dinkster. <laughs> and, and here we also got Wise. Tato I'm or a, Dallas. I'm a, the man. I'm a wise cunt. I like that word. I don't know why. Many people don't. Am like I allowed that to word. say your name? Yeah. Uh, I, did I just we, dock drop you? We've we've already been doing that. <laughs> I know. Like we did that. Like, All right. Tens of times in the first two podcasts. Since then, I've gotten the fuck over it. No, I'm not even gonna pretend like oh I was triggered, because I wasn't really triggered. I was like, oh, well, I guess they're not using the name that I told them to call me. Oh, oh well. All right. Do you have articles? I got articles. Uh, obviously. But I think you should begin. Well, I have to pull them up, so. Okay. What to do when you witness Islamophobic harassment? Hang on, let me pull up uh, screen sharing real quick. What to do when so, you witness Islamophobic harassment? Hang on, I've forgotten how to do the screen sharing. There we go. There we go. Okay, are you are you watching? Yes, I am. Right, I think there's a comic here. Yeah, it says... What to do if you are witnessing Islamophobic harassment? A bystander's guide to help the person who's being targeted. You you saw this before, right? When I linked no, this. I no, I saw a meme of it where basically it was like the the woman is supposed to let the the guy like have sex with her because <laughs> he's a hero who stands up to terrorism. It was just a joke, but yeah. Maybe I should pull this up on my. Okay, hang on. I should pull this up on the other window. All right, deal. There we go. Now I got the screen sharing thing again. <laughs> Technical chisel whistle. What is this? Okay. What did there we go. I don't like being the technical one in this relationship. Okay, it says uh engage conversation, pick a random subject and start discussing it. Keep building the safe space. The safe space. Are you uh, triggered yet? There we go again. Yeah. Are you triggered? Well, I don't know. I don't think it's cool to harass people just because you see them wearing, like, cultural garb. Uh, so, if I were to see that, I'd probably shut that shit down real fast. What? But, of course... Get out. We have intruders on the podcast. Alright, we're good. Okay. But, of course, their definition of harassment... It probably differs from mine. Like, for example, I, I well, I don't like randomly accost people in the streets and try to tell them that their religion is wrong. Uh, I do that to you because we're friends. Yeah. Like, but I don't just walk up to, like, random people and, like, screw with their day just because I see them wearing, like, a rosary or something around their neck or a cross around their neck. And tell them that they're full of shit. You know? So I, I wouldn't do the same thing to uh, a Muslim. But if someone were doing that, I'd, like, not get myself involved. But if someone were, like, clearly harassing somebody, like, calling them a terrorist or something, or trying to frisk them or something like that, or just being a dick I'd probably shut it down pretty fast uh, yeah this I don't I don't remember why I grabbed this but this is actually 
like an okay thing to be spreading around. It's like it, if you're witnessing any kind of harassment, like that, it's just not okay. This is like one of those rare times that you have to agree with SJWs because you're a decent human being. Well, this one comes from anonymous. Oh, it does. I don't know. I don't know necessarily if it's SJW. Uh, well, I mean, technically, you know, there's actually a part of me that doesn't like the term social justice warrior because they're actually like social justice is actually a good thing. Yeah. But like, you know, they take it to the next level. Oh, it's, it's not really quote unquote social justice if it's uh. There it is. You it know, says, the way social justice warriors are uh, described. It says translated in English for the Middle Eastern feminist. Right there. So I guess mm. this is the good kind of SJW propaganda. I don't know why <laughs> SJWs partner up with Islam it's... and are like, oh yeah, that's cool. Yeah, that's super it... weird. There are two kinds of SJ or uh, there are like two kinds that I've encountered. There are like the kinds that will just like bash Christianity all day long, and then when it comes to Islam, which in a lot of the ways that people like me t have a problem with religion, Islam and Christianity don't differ that much in in those respects. So, so it's kind of like weird how they'll. They'll bash Christianity all day long, but then when it comes to Islam, they're like, "Oh, well, we got to protect them. They're it's their culture or something like that." That's like one kind of SJW, and then there's a there's the other kind that's like that protects both and and says like, "Well, every, everyone has to have their beliefs, and as long as they're not hurting anybody else." And it's like, yeah, that's kind of okay. Okay, well, you know, you. You do the same thing. I love it when people are like, you don't have to change people's mind, Eric. Everyone, everyone, you know, is allowed to have their belief. And I'm like, okay, but I think it is actually pertinent to try to make people see things from your perspective because then that's how you arrive at the truth. Debate if two is people, good for progression. Yeah, if two, if. If two people are debating, and one of, one of the one of them's right and one of them's wrong, then eventually, you know, eventually, you're gonna come to the best conclusion. So, but it's funny that it's funny because the people who like tell me that I don't have to argue with people and that they should have their own beliefs, they're like trying to convince that they're trying to convince me to agree with them on that topic About... which makes me the winner of that argument by proxy because they're pr they're just proving themselves wrong in this like paradox of like you, I'm going to prove to you that you don't have to prove other people right okay <clears throat> I found this article called wage gap between black and white men is as bad as in 1950 but I don't see any sources anywhere. And it's another wage gap thing. Uh, it's so... evocative. Do you know Guess about this what? website? What? It's, pr it's pr prob probably the same concept as the gender pay gap. Black people probably are not oh, here it is. In, the, in the same professions and stuff. I think All right, here's your source. source. I didn't see it before. I don't. I don't know what any of this means. Studying well, working and non-working men, we find that after close closing substantially from 1940 to mid 1970s, the median black-white earnings gap has since returned to its 1950 level, while the positional rank the median black men would hold in the white distribution has remained little changed since 1940. Wait. The median black-white earnings gap. This is another earnings gap, not a wage gap. 
Yep. That's a big old <laughs> so problem they have, in their logic. They have the same thing. They're, they're implying that they're not getting <coughs> equal pay for the same reason that women aren't getting equal pay. Because they claim that... Oh, this is just... Well, is the is the source claiming discrimination? Uh, I don't know. This is the first time I've ever seen it, but it's uh, it just uh, the first two sentences. It says right here that it's a, a, an earnings gap. Right. Yeah. See, I don't even want to think about this stuff until socioeconomic status is taken into account. What is socioeconomic I don't, status? Well, if like. In like their place the in society. Of, yeah. Like people who live in ghettos and stuff have a lower socioeconomic standing than people who live in like that really rich neighborhood that's by Walmart. Yeah. I don't know if you even know what I'm referring to, but with all the McMansions, you know. <laughs> Should we do the uh, Steve Martin thing that I shared with you earlier? Um, Steve Martin. Oh, yeah, his tweet. The tweet. Yeah. I have, I have it up on Huffington Post. I don't remember. The, the video is probably going to play, so be prepared. Cover your ears, mm. YouTube. Okay, there we go. <coughs> Yeah, it says it right here. I don't here. even want to. Uh... Here we go. The, the tweet reads, When I was a young man, Carrie Fisher, she was the most beautiful creature I'd ever seen. She turned out to be witty and bright as well. Do you know much about Steve Martin? Yeah. No. I don't either. I think that... But I... Uh, yeah, I... That, I think that implies mm -hmm. that he was raised in, like... A more a, in a time when women were viewed upon more objectively, and it because he says she turned out to be witty and bright as well. It's like their personality wasn't something. Is that Wait. ever a time in America? No, Dallas. Thing? Dallas. What's the first what? thing? Well, let me ask you something, Dallas. What's the first thing you thought when you saw me? When you met me, probably I should ask. I thought. Damn, what's wrong with his teeth? <laughs> really? Yeah, I, I, I saw. Uh, what was the name of that football guy that came to our school? Do you know his name? No. Um, Why? I first saw you on that day. That was like the uh, first or second day. Hmm. And I saw you like, what, like sixteen rows ahead of me? Probably more like seven. So the first thing you saw was my teeth. That's yes. great. But anyway, but... so my teeth. Yes, you saw my teeth and you <laughs> thought about my teeth. Right. So what does so that show? It, it was appearance before anything else. Oh, uh, yeah. It's a lot easier to see someone's teeth than their wit the first time you look at them. <laughs> SJWs. What? I, I don't know, man. I just, I'm like sick and tired of talking about SJWs, man, because there's, they're just so cancerous and disgusting, and I hate them to the very core of my being. But I also agree with uh, Dusty Dusty Smith and the controversy that was around him. I actually agree with him. I think that the SJWs have been done to death, and uh, you know. It's time to focus on things that are more important. Well, Dusty wants to go back to the atheist versus Christian YouTube war, which all the other debunkers said that that's already been... That's done and over with. Like, that's old now. The same thing with this SJW well, stuff. So what are they going to... Yeah, what are they gonna <clears> I think they've both next? been done to death, except except for the fact that 
the Christian right is gaining foothold again here in the United States a little bit, and that's kind of uh, off-putting to people like myself. So, you know, there might be more uh, more battleground for that. I think here soon, the debunkers but are I, I think that. <laughs> Mm. I think the debunkers are going to go after, like, Islam now, because that's just all you hear about on the media now, Islam and, you know. Oh, like, man, I mean, and... I think I think that's something. That'd be, that takes some bravery, though. That's why we've got to stay anonymous. <laughs> yeah. But not to not be really, not but... to be confused with anonymous, the hacktivist right. group. Mm, yeah. Well, you know, I, I don't realized know. something while playing Watch Dogs Two. Yeah. And that's uh well the first thing is that DeadSec, the group that the main character belongs to, is a parody of Anonymous, and that. You know, most of the followers of DeadSec, they wouldn't ever see what was going on behind the scenes at DeadSec. And what's going on behind the scenes at DeadSec is actual, like, operations going on, infiltrating businesses, finding out secrets, and sharing them. But if, if you think about it, if they were to, like, they show several videos throughout the game, if you were to watch those videos say that they were real videos and you went onto YouTube and you looked at that you would think that it's a it's a bunch of like make made up like bullshit which is exactly what you think about when you think or when you see something that was made on like anonymous on their websites so they're either well, remember but yeah you're taking this example from a fiction source well though. I've thought about it so they're either dead honest or they're completely like just conspiracy theorists well they have to provide like substantial evidence to well, support the, their claim and the, not just like easily disprovable sophistry like that picture that when it was going around about uh 9-11 and the steel beam that was like cut perfectly that yeah. was like taken the day after when they were like deconstructing the wreckage so, uh, duh, <laughs> that's going to be a problem, flaw, big hole in your argument there. What was I going to say? Uh, oh, they, they didn't, the dead set group didn't really, uh, put forward any evidence until, like, the very end of the game where they leaked, like, everything, and they got people arrested. Yeah. Because they didn't, they well, didn't. They just made, they made videos similar to Anonymous's videos, and that's why I here's think the, it's a, a big parody of Anonymous. Here's the other thing about conspiracy theorists is like, like they have to turn everything into a, ooh, it's the big boogeyman, and then the Rothschilds, you know, are in charge of everything, and it's the Illuminati, and the world is run by lizard people. They no. own five hundred trillion dollars. Uh, wrong it's uh i mean i'm not saying that's wrong i'm not really sure about that but what I, what i am saying though is that um all the shady stuff that goes on in the world it's going on right out here in the open for everyone to see like everything that happened with uh hillary and look at trump and the way he's putting his cabinet together and you can go and you can look for yourself about about pretty much everything and it's all all like readily apparent there's no big behind the scenes conspiracy that's going on because they do everything they do out in the open in front of everyone they just don't care cuz they know they have power and they know how to how to keep it so do you uh do you want to do one of your articles now uh, absolutely. And by the way, you were talking earlier about um, global warming, I think it was. Was I? Not global warming. Uh, pet issues and stuff for debunkers to talk about. Oh, yeah. Like, global warming is becoming a serious problem. 
Uh, I heard the other day, and it was actually Vanessa that told me this, uh, if the ocean warms up five more degrees, all the plankton will die. And plankton provide like 70% of the Earth's oxygen. Yeah, I was just about to say something like that. That's serious. We're gonna yeah, it's kind like, of a big deal. We're going to die in like three months. Yeah. Hey. Don't worry, though. God's got that all covered. Oh, uh, yeah, for sure. Hey, <laughs> you know what? You know what's funny about that? You know my favorite band, Sabotage? Yeah. It's well, a dead fucking you and you band, look, Eric. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, <laughs> well, uh, if you go and look, not on, not during Christmas time, turn on any radio station, you got that Carol the Bells playing, but, uh... Trans-Siberian Orchestra, my dude. No, that's not Trans-Siberian Orchestra. Oh, I, I have the Sabotage album that that song is on. I didn't, I don't know that. Yeah, well, you should. <laughs> anyway... But most of Sabotage's songs, like, from their early days with their first singer and their first guitar player, are, like, about the destruction of the Earth brought on by mankind's arrogance. And there's one song that I really like called I Believe, and uh, it's about, like, the human race getting off of Earth and finding, an, like, they don't know if they're going to find anything, but they know that the Earth is doomed, and so they, they like, leave on a spaceship or something and try to find another planet to go to. That sounds like a cheesy 90s film. Well, it's not. It's a cheesy 80s song, and I love it. So, moving on, moving right along. Alright. Are you going to start sh or screen sharing? Yeah, as soon as I pull up some of these articles. Pull them up? Do you even lift, bro? Uh, nope. Me either. Alright, let's start with... Um... Sad news. Oh, heck. Carrie Fisher died. Yep. How'd you know that it was gonna be that? I didn't, but that's the biggest headline as of like two days ago to now wow well here we go um oh shit huh. okay there's hey, like an ad showing what i said your email my what your email is showing you have to uh what do you mean Put that in a new window. People can... People, Why? People can spam you about that. Uh, yeah, they... Well, I've showed it before, and it's not like anyone watches the podcast, so... Okay. Rip. It's all good. Man, I don't even check my email, so let them spam me. <laughs> uh, okay, so... Obviously, beloved actress Carrie Fisher died Tuesday. Rest in peace. Um, now, here's what this says. It says, um, D are you afraid of death? This is actually exactly how I feel about death, too. Um, but the interviewer asked, do you fear death? And uh, she said, no, I fear dying. Anything with pain associated with it, I don't like. But I've been there for a couple of people when they were dying, and it didn't look fun. But if I was going to do it, I'd want someone like me around, and I'll be there. And she said, I'm not going to enjoy dying, but there's not much prep for that. Dang. It's pretty hard to believe that, like, she's dead. It's hard to believe, like, when anyone dies, like, they're actually gone from this world and uh also you know i actually knew someone who died and uh they told me that it's like falling asleep basically it's not that bad 
Yeah, unless uh, it's there's pain attached. Well, yeah, if they die in a really painful way, but uh, that guy he OD'd on some sort of drug, I think, and he, yeah, he said he was like, yeah, it's basically just falling asleep, and uh, he was revived. Oh. So, uh, yeah. So I don't know. Maybe it was the drug that made it that way. Actually, you never know. Well, maybe he yeah, should maybe try it's like it. super painful. Maybe he should try some drugs. other way. Try to die some other way. Yeah, and definitely. And then get revived. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I don't know if he'd be willing to go through that again. <laughs> no, I hated that guy. He was like the worst person I ever knew. Honestly. Nice. He like he had this dog, and the dog like pooped on the floor like one too many times. It, she was a puppy, and, it, and she pooped on the floor like one too many times. And he took her out onto the highway and just like threw her out of his car and drove off. What the fuck? Yeah, exactly. It's a puppy. You gotta train that I know. shit. I know, dude. And I, like, would hear him beat her and stuff. Ugh. It was bad. I wish, he, I wish he just died when he OD'd on heroin, man. That's a little harsh. Yeah. But. A little bit. You know. Gotta do what you gotta do. So did you only get two articles for the podcast? No, I got, like, a bunch, my friend. So we got Carrie Fisher's experience with death you know i heard they finished shooting episode eight of star wars oh good that means she's in it right yeah but she's not in nine uh well i guess i'll have to write her out somehow that was like the saddest thing for me i was like oh man now she's not gonna be in the next couple star wars episodes <laughs> I'm a terrible person. <laughs> Honestly, that's that's why people know her best is Star Wars. Well, you know, I don't, Star Wars I is don't, pretty good. I don't think I actually know anything that she was in other than Star Wars. Let me just do Dude, I... IMDb. All right, check this out. IMDb. And now we're going to get into the heavy news, my friend. Like, the big news. Wonderwell, Star Wars Episode Eight, Family Guy. Oh, Angela. Force Awakens video game. No, the heavy news, my friend. Girlfriend's Guide to Divorce. No. Nope. Hey. Hey. She was in the Big Bang Theory. White House announces retaliation against Russia, sanctions, and eject ejecting diplomats. For what? Uh, hacking the election. That wasn't proven, was or it? Hacking and uh, influencing. The election. Oh my god. <laughs> Excuse me. An ad came up and it's like making noise. It should not be doing that. Oh, I can't hear it. Yeah, I know, but it's really <laughs> distracting me. So, give me one second, please. So, what, All right. are they basically like just ridding themselves of an entire country for something that some of its citizens did to them um oh shit sorry Dallas what spilled my Pepsi oh dear god Pepsi spill get the cleanup crew Okay, so here's how I feel. You want to know how I feel about this? Because I, you know how I always have an opinion. Um, yeah, your opinions are legendary. Not, 
we should not be so worried about the Russians hacking us. What we should be worried about is what they all they did was show us some emails that they weren't that we weren't supposed to see, and what was in those is far worse than whatever uh, what's going on with Russia. Oh, so they were the ones responsible right. for the uh, for email gate for the leaked emails. Well, that's what they're that's what they're telling us. Uh, I don't know that if they haven't really come out with much concrete proof about it, but yeah, uh, they're that's going what they're to, saying. They're going to eject their what was it? Their uh, what did it say? They're gonna eject uh 35 russian diplomats and they're gonna tell them they're gonna make them leave and go back to russia and they're gonna close two russian compounds because they have accused them of something that they have no evidence for or little evidence uh well i can't really speak to the amount of evidence that they have i just haven't seen it is all i'm saying uh -huh. but what what really just what bothers me is like that's not where the concern should should be and uh honestly like remember earlier when i said all the conspiracies are like right out in the open yeah it's so transparent the government is clearly like projecting their corruption onto russia they're like oh uh, Russia came, comes out and tells us all this messed up stuff that uh, our government is doing. And, uh, oh, look, look, the Russians are hacking us. The Russians are hacking us. Be worried about that. Well, okay, maybe. But I'm also a little bit worried about the shady shit that's going on in our uh, so-called republic. You know? Yeah. Yeah. I kinda I kinda zoned out there a little. Oh. Uh, that's great. But <laughs> uh Yeah, I would say that um mankind's days on this planet are numbered. Uh in the words of George Carlin, the human game was up a long time ago and now we're just playing out the string. Uh, I I do agree with that. I think that that's probably true at this point. Yeah. Uh, it, we mo yeah, with seventy percent of the oxygen gone, if the <laughs> ocean r rises five degrees temperature, that's kind of a problem. Yeah. Um. <laughs> We might we might actually see the end of the human race in our lifetime. <laughs> or it'll get a lot worse. That's, yeah. That's kind of a scary thought, my dude. That is terrifying. Like, I just wanna make music, man. <laughs> <laughs> I just wanna play video games. So then again, I don't. That's pretty. I don't want to have to, like, have a job. So. Yeah, maybe, might maybe, as well. Maybe the sooner the better. <laughs> <coughs> all right, on to Buzzfeed, so we can. Twenty sixteen was a horrible year. Let's just get it all over with. God, twenty sixteen was a horrible year. Oh, dude, that's why. All right, hold on. If you'll excuse me for a minute, I have to. Uh, I have to send a text message to one of my most beloved friends. Oh, is it who I think it is? Vanessa? Yeah. Yeah. Because I remembered something I was trying to remember earlier. Oh, heck. Breaking news. We were, like, talking about being basic. Basic. 
Mm -hmm. And I was like, I was like, I did the most basic thing and I couldn't think of what it was. And I was like, oh yeah, the, I jumped on the 2016 is the worst year ever bandwagon. So I, I just want to, while I have it in mind, it's like, <laughs> I found I found something. You can do it. We'll we'll put this up after uh after you go through your article. Or should we go through All it right. now while you're texting? No, I'm good. All right. I apologize for that. Very unprofessional of me, but Super. you know, when it comes to my m beloved friends Ooh. Of which there are a few, you know. Look at that I have first to... one. How did boys look good without makeup? Because society hasn't told boys they look bad without it. Shots fired. Um, well, let me tell you something. Um, does this say Dinkster on it? It does. <laughs> what? Eric's a Dinkster. It says Eric is a Dinkster. Where? Oh, on this piece of paper I found. <laughs> Zach wrote that. Anyway, uh here's here's the problem with that. Um most there have been studies done. Most boys prefer women that don't wear makeup or without makeup. I think I think it would actually make more sense if the study said that boys like girls more often that look good without makeup. Yeah, maybe yeah, you, all right, that's fair, wrong. probably. I don't know, it's possible that you read it right. Are, are you just saying that from memory? Yeah, I'm saying that from memory. And I'm also just speaking to my personal experience. I think, like taking on makeup is disgusting and honestly i think most women in general look better without it uh at the same time uh i think i think the same thing of rock stars uh i don't really like my rock bands uh doing the poison thing and caking makeup on their face it's not cool uh not cool at all. Yeah, it's pretty cool, Eric. What are you talking about? The occasional guy liner in a rock concert, like, that's cool, maybe. But makeup, not cool. No need for foundation, man, on a rock star. Or <laughs> blush. Or eyeshadow. Not cool. All right, then. Moving on. This. Oh my gosh. It's look a. That, look at that knee, though. It's a dressing ad. And so here's what they say about them. This is, this is a okay. solid dressing commercial. What are you trying? What are you really trying to sell? Equal sexual representation between both genders on TV. Uh, let's get zesty. <laughs> remember when there that remember that time when a whole bunch of guys said they weren't going to buy the saw dressing because it's objectified men. Sometimes I think about that and laugh really hard. So here's their point. Men. Their point is that those guys were hypocrites. But actually, here's the real the real point that should be made and I really wish Vanessa was on here tonight so I could say in your face because um, <clears throat> hello this happens all the time so there's no such thing as like women being objectified in commercials because it happens to everyone that's how you sell products it's like look this guy uses our salad dressing so you <laughs> should buy our salad dressing that's how advertising works. It's all about like subliminal messaging and stuff, which is kind of stupid. Well, it's not stupid, but that's just the way things are. That's the way things are always going to be. 
So, yeah, always remember. Guy right here listens to Eric Kanabi's music. So, yeah. <laughs> um, Hi, I'm a woman living in a post-apocalyptic environment slash desert island on a TV show, and I have the smoothest armpits you've ever seen. <laughs> I'm a woman in medieval times, and my eyebrows are perfect, and I have no leg hair. I'm a Viking woman in a movie, and I have a thin and trim waist and a huge rack and perfect eyeliner. I'm a woman... I'm a woman. Nope, that says I'm a woman in a world without power, and I wake up with perfect curled hair. Yeah, it makes sense, dude. All right. Yeah, here's the problem with that. That person okay, said, first of all... That person said, I'm a woman. <laughs> well, yeah, that's the first problem with many. <laughs> all right, but look, look, okay, so... Okay. So, if they made all the women in, in these movies really ugly, I bet you that they'd be up in arms about that, too. Oh, my God, they're making all the women so disgusting and hideous. Why would they do that? what does this make women look like uh not good but also have you ever seen them the men in movies like that too usually they don't look too bad themselves hang on can you pull up an example like what like what kind of movies are these medieval times Let's look up oh, i don't know medieval movies uh I don't know, man. They just have the weirdest stuff about, to complain about, about, honestly. A Knight's Tale. Let's just Maybe see. like Monty Python or something. <laughs> oh, yeah, you look at, uh. What's the guy's name? Heath Ledger? In yeah. A Knight's Tale. Guy looks great All right. for the time period. But you All right, give you me one. Give me. About it. A note's tail. Kill yourself, Dallas. There, I see this group shot of like all the main characters. I think, I think I've only seen this movie like one and a half times, and it was a while ago. But only two of them look really haggard. He looks... Look at his... Look at those perfect fingernails. <laughs> Ridiculous. Ridiculous. Am I supposed to believe that this is from the from the Middle Ages? Of course not. And look at that wink. They didn't even wink back then. And, and, uh, and they're not even speaking Old English. How dare they? Yeah. Sorry. We live in the real world. Alright, this is what got this article on my list, though. The Sit like a lady. The... No. <laughs> Boom! Okay, well, that'd be fine if it weren't for the fact that you're the same people who make man-spreading into a big deal. So if you're allowed to sit like that, why can't I? Oh, yeah. If you uh, are allowed to lady spread, then why aren't I allowed to man spread? That's a weird way to put it. Because feminists hate men. No, the dictionary <laughs> definition of feminism says that it's an equality oh, between does all it? the genders. All does it? seven genders. Does it? Well, you know what? Check this out. <laughs> a person who is a homosexual or lighthearted and carefree. Foolish, stupid, or unimpressive. Informal, offensive. Yo, Eric, you're gay, but what definition are you? <laughs> I don't know. Doesn't matter. Because what matters is the connotation. 
And and huh. and Go if you say yeah. the so the dictionary definition of feminism is honestly like ridiculously unimportant because uh they don't conduct themselves that way and 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 even if the dictionary definition of feminism were upheld it's still like only about women because it it clearly says women as compared with men so it's not about men and women it's about women being as good as men yeah. I, I hate having to explain that to people man people I'm looking at the uh, urban dictionary definition of the word feminism and i think they're all getting it wrong because i haven't seen i'm on the second page now the third page now and i haven't seen a single one that said cancer yet so oh man let me tell you something dallas uh tell me it something just, it's just there are so many examples of this but this is the one that i'm thinking about now it's like People are such simpletons, man. They, like, like, on, like, just on average, like in general, people are freaking. They are so unbelievably simple and small-minded, and it's like honestly, it's like pathetic and disgusts me. Because how can you sit there and read that definition? All right. Femoinism. Ready? I make typos. I'm human. The advocacy of women's rights on the grounds of political, social, and economic equality to men. Okay? How can you... How can so many people out there read that definition and look at, like, the etymology and stuff of feminism and, and read that and be so, like, single-layered... That they don't understand that feminism is about women with respect to men, not about men and women being equal. How 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 can people not make that distinction? I don't understand. It doesn't make mu it doesn't make sense to me because and, and maybe it's just because I have that like high powered thinking brain that's always going crazy, but. Ha like it's because of how, it's because of one how, word, Eric. How do people miss that? It's because of, it's miss... because of one word, Eric. It's called misogyny. Oh, is that why? Is that why? <laughs> um, is nuance misogynist now? Nuance hates women. Unfortunately, I don't know, man. It's just how can how can people be so one? I just don't, I don't know how that can. Oh. How, okay, and that's the other thing, too. The whole thing about, like, the wage gap being an average, like, across all, like, like, I, like I'm so perplexed by the fact that that detail, that, like, this detail here and the detail of the wage gap, I have no idea. It would be... How, I, I have no idea how that could just elude... An entire population of people to where, like, the common popular belief is, like, the most blatantly incorrect It would be a legitimate thing. argument. Like, it would be a legitimate point for feminism if it was an actual thing. But then when you tell them that it's an earnings gap, not a wage gap, they just spam you with the feminist buzz buzzwords and completely ignore you. Oh my god, I sent three articles to someone, Dallas. I sent three articles. Oh my gosh, three? To, yeah, three articles from, like, pretty reputable sources. Even one from the Huffington Post, which is super liberal. And I sent, I sent them to my friend who is, like, a feminist and SJW type. And uh, we're not really friends. Like, honestly, like, I can be friends with you, Dallas. And you're, like, a Christian conservative, right? Well, I'm kind of conservative, a little bit conservative leaning. Um, and I, I'm like, you're like my best friend, honestly. And we have like total disagreements about certain things. Because okay, I'm not a, but I like, I'm not I like, I like can't be friends with country. SJW. Because I'm not a yeah. retard. Well, yeah, but also like I cannot be friends with an SJW. I've tried, 
it doesn't work because they're so holier than thou, man. They won't even be your friend. So anyway, I used to have a friend that was an SJW. I sent her. Actually, it's a he now. Uh, oh shit! The whole time I knew her, she was she was her, but now she's a he. So I apologize if you're listening. There's no way they are. I don't think of I. Just, yeah, I don't think about it very much. And the whole the whole time I knew you, you were identified as a girl. So um, just anyway. Sorry, I'm I'm I support transgender people, so I try to use the pronouns that he prefers, but it's kind of weird, um, and I I'm not gonna back down from saying that it's kind of weird. Okay, so uh, where was I? Oh yes, sent him three articles about why the wage cap is like overblown, and 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 you know what happened? Sent me a goddamn picture of Clorox in a soda can and told me to drink up. <laughs> what the fuck, dude? Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Cancer. What? Yeah, I don't know. It's just like. But, sir, back to my point. Human beings are such simpletons, man. They have no sense. And and honestly, that's the other thing, too. Is, like, especially in America, like, on the other side of the coin, like, oh, hey, Republicans, um, you know, every other country in the world pretty much has uh, universal health care. Maybe we should do that. Uh, no, it's a, it's unsustainable. It's a commie, commie. Learn some economics. Uh, read some. Uh, what's that guy's name? What's that guy's name? Oh my God, they love him. They're like, he's like their Jesus. I, um, I'm not cultured enough. Von Mises. Yeah, read some Von Mises. Learn some economics. Gold standard, non-aggression principle. You can't, you can't make me give thirteen percent of my money away so that. Not everyone has to pay thousands of dollars out of pocket just so they can not die. It's like, hold on a second. Wait. Let me, hold on. Every other country in the world is doing this. And it's working out actually very well for them. And in fact, the people who live in these countries are like generally way more happy than the people who live here in America. But no, it's unsustainable. Learn some economics. Tommy, you hate freedom. Oh. It's like, <laughs> um, okay. All right, well. Okay. All right, I have this picture I want to show you on Facebook. That's because, let me tell you something, man. <laughs> Theoretical economics is not infallible. All right. Okay, now show me your, your picture, please. Okay, it says... Can you see it on the screen? Mm. Do no. You, you don't see it? What the fuck? Is it of Debbie Reynolds? No. Wait, where does, uh, it, where does it show that? What the heck? I don't know, dude. I think it's like... We're like frozen in time. I did the wrong one. This one. All right. Nope. That's still the wrong one. There we go. Why? Why do people think it's okay to call babies he or she? They can't speak yet, so they can't say their preferred gender. Please refer to them as baby self or toddler self until they can say their pronoun preference. Otherwise, you're ableist and transphobic. Uh. What the fuck? Yeah, you know what, Dallas? You know how early, you know how earlier I was saying the SJW thing's done to death. Yeah. This is well, like, like it's really hard for me to be mad at her, like, because I'm only focused on the hashtag on top. Liberalism is a mental disorder. No, it's not, you fucking idiot. Liberalism is like every. At every period in history where good shit happened, guess who was at the helm of that ship? Liberals. 
like think back to I don't like know the civil rights uh, movement. Civil rights movement, uh, the Civil War, uh, War for American Independence, the uh, Enlightenment. Was that a the good Enlightenment? Example? Yeah, yeah. Because well, people who were to the were left. For, to... Conservatives were for monarchies back then. Yeah, like the Tories in England and stuff. And then there's like, yeah, the Age of Enlightenment and um, uh, like the French Revolution era where like democracy started springing up all around the world. It, it, like it wasn't a bunch of freaking gun-toting Republicans who did that. <laughs> it was like a bunch of liberal intellectuals who were like, we need more freedom. And we need to come up with a better way of doing things. Progressivism. It, it's always been that way. You know you know what happens when conservatives take charge? The what? Great Depression. Reaganomics. The Great Recession. That's like, that's their track record. Actually, I, I don't remember who was responsible for all that. At, off the top of my head, I can't think of it. So I can't well, really debunk you or prove for myself whether you're right or wrong on that. I don't know why I can't remember who was... Uh, Hoover. Hoover was president during the time period, but Calvin well, Coolidge so was there right before it started, and he refused to take presidency again because he knew it was going to happen. Yeah. Um, well... And Hoover didn't do anything for the four years he was in there. Hoover. So FDR Except had to come he in. Got a, he got a lot of crappy stuff named after him, though. Hoover Hoovervilles. Uh, yeah. Hoover houses. Um, but yeah, like, I don't know. Some people disagree on that and say that there were, like, a lot more underlying causes. But I, I just like to say that the Great Depression was because of... Um, under regulation. Uh, there we go. So yeah, sorry for making a mountain out of a molehill there, but yeah, uh, SJWs do not represent liberalism. In fact, they are pretty much against everything liberalism stands for. So yeah, sorry about that. I can't see. Was he left or right leaning? Come on now, he was right leaning. Who, Coolidge or Hoover? Coolidge was Republican. But the Great Depression wasn't because Republican president. <laughs> First off, no. I don't want to go into it. <laughs> right off the bat. <laughs> yeah. Uh, the old Kanabi debunk trope. Right off the bat. Here you go. You really need to start making videos. Like debunk videos? Yeah. I'd have I'd have a great time doing that. Uh You just need to start. Like, I kinda I kinda helped you along with that Mr. Trump speech thing. But you took the charge on the script for that video. Yeah. So you could definitely do it. In uh, in fact, I actually kind of like felt weird about how how much charge I took up with that, but um, let's see. Uh, I agreed with something Donald Trump said, because you know even a broken clock is right twice a day, and uh, I'd say that Trump pretty much exemplifies that he said uh something about like move on with our lives about russia we don't need to be imposing sanctions on them uh i probably but he agree only with that. says that because the russians hacked the election in favor of him well, you've been caught yeah, well, my dude but all they did well all they did was reveal things that were true it's not like they rigged the voting machines or anything no they rigged it they rigged it nope. for Trump. That's how Dude, he Dude, I saw this. He's not my president. I... Okay. <laughs> um, say that with a straight face. 
<laughs> How long have we been on? Almost an hour. All right. So and now it's been an hour. Um. <clears throat> so uh, Trump also said. Did he know? Yeah, Trump said um. He wanted to like start the a new arms race with Russia. All right, pull that up real quick. I saw that was an article on your list of articles. This is just uh, like people's responses to it. There was one that was pretty good, I thought. Um, which was it was the last one. It says here, someone who is like from someone who grew up during that uh, like the actual Cold War. It says, each time Donald Trump has tweeted about nuclear weapons, I've had a terrible, familiar feeling. The anxiety I experienced as a child in the 1950s, thinking that the world could end in a moment, that children would have to live with that again, is horrifying to me. Yeah, that's kind of scary. That's a very scary feeling of having just instant doom over your head at any well, moment. Well, I mean... We're we're facing that in many ways right now, so it's kind of like you know. So just keep listening to your kids, Bop, and just ignore everything, <laughs> and it'll all end soon. <laughs> hey, that's what I do. <laughs> just listen to kids, Bop. You'll be fine. All right, let's, let's end. Emails. Let's end on a good note. Because the news Celebrities is just... Celebrities we tragically gained in 2016, and there's a picture oh of Oh, God, Ken no Bone. way. Mr. Ken Bone, Ken that's Bone. my buddy. Remember, my buddy in IT, Ken Bone. Ryan dressed up as him for the yeah. Halloween thing. That's why I said Ken Bone's my buddy in IT. <laughs> so, uh, unbeknownst to Ryan... Uh, Ken Bone probably voted for Hillary. Oh, heck. Yeah, I'm pretty sure he actually did, so... Good job there, but... Uh... <laughs> so it turns out... There are studies that found our brains are guided more by empathy than selfishness. I, I definitely need to read on. All right, as the year winds to close, gifts and giving are foremost in many people's minds. And now, two new neuroscience studies suggest that our brains prompt us to act more like Santa than Scrooge. In one study, researchers scan participants' brains to identify connections between generous behavior and brain activity. In the other, scientists dampened activity in areas of the brain associated with impulse control to see if that would alter a person's uh, empathetic actions. A Persians? Persia yep. hasn't been a country for years, dude. The findings from both studies led researchers to conclude that human behavior is guided more by empathy than by selfishness. In addition, the findings suggest a path toward treating people with conditions that lower their ability to understand others. It's pretty cool. Wait, what's that mean? Hang um, on. I kind of blinked for a second just like a path people who empathy. struggle with empathy with conditions uh, that lower their ability to will no longer have others. to do that well someday people whose social cognition is impaired could be helped by treatments that regulate the neural pathways that enhance restrict their empathetic feelings so this is like saying that there might be a way to treat people who have like what is it is it uh, psychopathy or like is it a so psychopath or a sociopath I can never tell they're like basically the same thing I'm pretty sure one of them doesn't care about people and the other one just doesn't care about the rules I think hmm. I think this is saying that it's a like a path towards curing being a psychopath. Well, that's kind of a good thing, I would say. Yeah. 
but is it already cured? Yeah, I don't know what I mean by that. Keep going. Uh, Eric.exe is not responding. Right. What? I said Eric.exe has stopped responding. What the hell is that? <laughs> you know when a program stops responding? When it stops working, it yeah. crashes. It's, it, Windows brings up an error message that says, pro, like, whatever the name of the program is, .exe has stopped responding. Oh, I thought you were, like, saying that there's actually a file called eric.exe, and I was like, seriously, what the hell do you have on your computer, Dallas? <laughs> it's actually a uh, porn of you. Oh, cool. Not sure where you got that, found that, <laughs> but uh, I'll be calling my ex-girlfriend and asking her where the hidden cameras were. <laughs> yep. You might want to do that, because uh, she's spreading it. Right. Well, maybe that'll. Maybe I'll start getting some phone calls from people. <laughs> You'll start getting phone calls from parents. Like, oh, I don't not want parents. No. No, I was talking about like interested interested um, participants in the next one. <laughs> no, I thought I was saying like I don't want my kids hanging out with you. Like, well, like that's something. great, Dallas, because you don't have any kids. I mean, whatever. Go on whatever. with the article, okay. my dude. In the first study, neuroscientists used imaging to look at brain activity while study participants performed an activity that tested their generosity. First, the scientists imaged participants' brains as they watched footage of a hand being jabbed with a pin and then as they mimicked facial expressions shown to them in the photos. This allowed the researchers to note which of the participants showed greater activity in brain regions associated with recognizing pain in others. Next, the participants were given money, which they could distribute however they chose among people represented by profiles on a computer. Like the researchers... Money? Not sure. The researchers expected to see correlations between the amount of money subjects are willing to share and the response of their brains in the scan or while they're watching people in pain, and we got that. Lack of bony. Yes. No, I think that's an I. Eak of bony. Well, yeah. The scientists found that the scans of the stingiest participants showed the most activity in prefrontal cortex, which regulates impulses. Meanwhile, the most generous subjects showed heightened brain activity in regions linked to recognizing pain and emotion and to mirroring others' behavior, according to the study, which was published online February 1st in journal Human Brain Mapping. So that basically means that, like, People get more selfish, the more developed their prefrontal cortex is and uh, impulse control and stuff. And so, like, like impulsively, humans are, like, almost selfless. Which is weird, because you would think the opposite. Yeah. But that's not true. Well, then, maybe, <laughs> maybe this means... Maybe this means that... Life without government is possible. Mm, well, maybe, but also, um, you know, I, f I figured like, you would it's, dismiss that. It's it's involved with the prefrontal cortex, which means like the smarter people get, the more selfish that they would likely be. <laughs> In the second study, uh, the researchers used brain st uh, stimulation to look at the question of whether human nature is essentially generous <coughs> with selfishness only emerging through civilization and learned behavior. Uh, so, this is kind of interesting. They can knock out an area in the brain for a while and see what happens when it goes offline. 
or increase activity in that marine region. They can do that? Yeah. That's pretty cool. And kind of scary. What if they could, like, make that into a portable device? They can actually hack people. This sounds like some sci-fi shit. Like an actual, oh, yeah, like, a, like a pretty good sci-fi movie, actually. Mind control. <laughs> okay, so the the scientists targeted two areas in the prefrontal cortex, temporarily removing their ability to block impulses. Then, as in the first study, the participants were given money to distribute among a group of people via computer profiles. The results showed that temporarily shutting down the prefrontal cortex did wonders for people's generosity. They were about 50% more generous with their money and then participants in the control group, according to the study published online in March 21st uh, in the journal Neuro Social Neuroscience. Well, I think they should have used the same people. Well, maybe, maybe they should have used the same people, because what if those people that they used for the experiment and not the control group were actually more generous uh, just in general like how did they account uh, yeah. for that that's true um I guess maybe disabling uh the, what was it disabling the impulses from the prefrontal cortex maybe that did have some effect but it could have had little effect and maybe oh yeah you're right that's you know that's the hard thing about experiments and stuff but um I don't know I just thought it was a little bit interesting and uh almost heartwarming maybe but now it raises more questions than answers because it's yeah, well, like the scientific method is a good does that one, mean... but it's not perfect Especially well, like, but what I'm like this. what I'm thinking is like, does that mean that the smarter people get, the more selfish they become? Yeah, I guess that's in a way what it's trying to say. Hmm. So that means that you're like super selfish, right? Yeah, exactly. I kind of am. I'm pretty self-centered, honestly. But that might be part of the Asperger's. <laughs> nice. You're Rain Man. Didn't you say that? Yeah, I said I'm Rain Man. I was obviously kidding, but... No, you actually... Is that a movie? No. Yeah. It's no. a movie about this, like, severely autistic guy who's also a genius. No, you're you're what the movie was based on. Yeah, Rain Man. Yeah, that was based on me, obviously. <laughs> All right, should we end it? Uh, yeah. There was just one more thing I wanted to say. No. Yes. All right. Well, goodbye, everybody. No, I'm just. Nope. Just Dallas. Say what you wanted to say. Okay. I was watching a history documentary earlier. All right, and uh, that's all the time we have. For no. Part. No. Dallas. It's just finish. I'm done. I was I was watching a history documentary earlier, and not only was the guy who plays Negan in The Walking Dead on the history documentary, so was Bill Paxton. Who is Bill Paxton? Bill Paxton, better known as the actor who played the Dinkster. Oh, oh yeah. Yeah. So. <laughs> Negan and the Dinkster were on the history documentary I watched. See, you're not the Dinkster. Bill Paxton is. I remember I looked that fact up at school. <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, Yo, I just everybody. Got, I just got a third monitor for Christmas. It's nice. incredible. Everyone got to taste my inside joke dinkster meme forced meme all right definitely forced did somebody ring the dinkster all right and with that 
it's time to end the show. So, what what was your uh what did you call your picture? Your uh Gmail account picture? My profile picture? Yeah. The one didn't you say it was Melonhead? Yeah, something like that. Fruit head. That was the name of the assignment. Fruit head. <laughs> Fruit heads yep. luscious banana locks. Say goodbye, everybody. Goodbye. Bye. Bye.